All right, they're working me hard here at CIM in Montreal. We're doing another episode of Mining Now. Um, we've had multiple hosts, multiple guests, and we've got a great company here on uh, today. At the end, to wrap up the day is Osenko. We have Gabriel Costello. Um, he is the climate change director at Osenko. We're going to cover some uh, very big topics, some complicated ones. So Osenko is the right company to do that. Gabriel, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you for having me here. Um, have you done a lot of these sort of lot, long form discussions before? Have you got a chance to do them? About climate change? Yeah. Yeah, in general. Uh, now I was working with the mining sector in the last 23 years, more or less. Yeah. Uh, when I was the manager of a large corporate operation, I decided to quit to start to do my PhD mm. uh, because I think that the industry still needs to learn more with a more deep understanding of what the climate change means and how that could impact the operations and how uh, the industry can build a more sustainable way to produce the metals. Now the critical metals, metals that, that we require. So I moved to, uh, to do my PhD and after three years, mm. I was focusing on research on, on climate change. So yeah, I think it's a very interesting way to to bring that again to the industry. Yeah, have you, um, I, I mean, I'm always interested in people's, I, I don't know if, sometimes people don't like to talk about, they like to try to talk about their, their you know, their overarching role, but I'm always interested in people's day to day. Right. And, and you, you're the, the climate change director at Osenko. So I'm interested, what, what, what does a Monday look like for you? What, what is your focus? What is a, uh, to wrap up the week? What is usually you're kind of, you're trying to put everything together at the end of the week? What does that yeah. look like for you? Yeah, well, first, um, as I was saying, we are a consulting firm. So we help our clients to achieve their goals that they have and the different areas that they need support. In my case, with my group, we help our clients to achieve to the climate change goals, the climate change perspective to assess the potential impacts uh, and the risk with the extreme weather and uh, prepare uh, plans for adaptation as well. So my typical week uh, will be to review uh, with the clients their requirements, uh, design the proposals uh, with my team, uh, contact them uh, following the projects that we are right now you know, under execution, and then as well uh, interact with the academia or research uh, groups to look what are the new things on their development, because this is a topic that, you know, it, it's not new. The climate change but there's still a lot of research going on yeah. and it's important to have uh, the, the last information uh, to provide that as well to our clients so you're kind of facilitating all three of you you mentioned uh, your team the clients academia you're sort of facilitating yeah trying to route all three of yeah, them. yeah I, I call myself uh, to support the collaboration with the, between the different areas I am sitting in the sustainability group uh, and as well in contact with the project development team, uh, those who design all the, the the projects and the facilities for the operations. So project delivery uh, provide that information and we support them as well with the understanding of how sustainability could be um, used to uh, have a design in the operations. There, there's, a chart, there's a graphic um, that comes from Osenko and I want to actually take I want to take our time to look at this because, and, and there's a reason because I've done a lot of these shows and we sort of, we'll talk about indigenous groups. We'll talk about mining, mine planning. And I'm looking at here, the transportation logistics, and we walk right. through these things, but so often the audience doesn't have a picture people that were, are within the mining sector. They understand, but this graphic, and I, so I'm going to show it to you. I, you know it already. Right. But it's got, it actually shows what, in a real world scenario, what the setup is. I don't know if this is an actual mine, um, but it, but it's, it's a good graphic. Yeah, sort of. For sure. Um, yeah, I would say it's um, a holistic view. It's yeah. the integration of all the different areas yeah. uh, as we work as well as, as company in Ausenko. It's, we call a pit to port. So you start the pit, the operation in the mining area. So we provide the services since the environmental impact assessment, supporting as well the design for the prefaciability for the new projects, and then be able to um, transport, for example, with the logistic, the pipeline to transport the um, concentrate to the port. We have a team as well working on the port. And during all that stage, you are near communities and we have the team as well working mm -hmm. with the communities, the environmental impact assessment, the biodiversity, the management of the operation and the management of the sustainability aspects. 
So all of that process, we integrate together. Our different teams in Ausenco are able to communicate, collaborate together with our clients and provide a full service. So that is interesting as well. When I came uh, to work to, to Ausenco to understand that it's not just sustainability, it's as well the engineering perspective, it's the design, how we can combine that all together. It's, how would I ask this? Where do you think mining is in an industry? I know this is a loaded question and, and not an easy one to answer. But where do you think they're at as an industry with understanding this graphic and how to actually put it all together? Where do you think they are as a whole? Well, I, I will say it depends where and what the stage of the mine life cycle is each company. There are companies that are doing the exploration stage, others on the profitability, construction or operation, or even others working on closure. Uh, and we see not right now that our companies that are returning to the closure uh, sites or the assets mm. to be able to uh, contribute and manage that and create a natural capital like biodiversity management. In general, the, the industry uh, and thinking on the critical minerals, the focus on be able to continue doing the extraction because the uh, ore deposits are, uh, the, the grade of the ore deposits are going down. Mm. So you require to do more use of water, more area of a uh, footprint, and that for sure will produce more waste and more impact in the communities and the environment. So the combination of understand that process uh, with a holistic perspective and be able to manage that in a, a sustainable way is, is critical for, uh, since the beginning to be able to plan that ahead for the next 20 or 30 years for the industry. What is Osenko, when, you, when you're coming in and talking to a client, what are you, from sustainability, what does it mean to Osenko? How is that communicated to the client in a way that is essentially palatable for them? Yeah, I would say that uh, our multiple countries experience and the diversity of people that we have in the company help us to support our clients mm -hmm. wherever they are because we can work with a company that is the headquarters based in Vancouver, but their operations are in Chile. So we have the team here working in Canada with them and that knows what are the corporate standards of this company, mm. but as well their operation in Chile, for example, we have another big team as well working in the engineer perspective in the sustainability right. that understand the local context. So together we can provide this service to our- How clients. different are those sometimes? Are they, are they pretty well aligned? In general, yeah, we obviously it's a, it's a challenge always and on the collaboration perspective to continue doing or working uh, together with a specific uh, different requirements in the context where the operations of future projects are. And they are changing in the legal perspective. There are differences yeah. in the permitting uh, areas and, and for sure the ecosystem is totally different. You will find areas that are uh, more dry or require more water for the production or other areas like here in Canada that we have a lot of water, so it requires a more management of the water yeah. and the ecosystem is different. So all that analysis requires the application for the design of the tailing facilities for the mill, for the pipeline, for the port. So all that combination of, of technology is important. I'm. I I'm asking this question. It's not to pick on the mining industry. Um, I'm from the mining industry. I, I want the industry to, to always be coming better. Where do you see, and it may be different in different countries, so maybe you have an example. Where do you see their Achilles heel? Where are they struggling the most in their that pit to port that they need to do a better job, but where, for whatever reason, they're, 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 and I'm sure there are some legitimate ones, where did they struggle, do you think, the most? I think there is no an specific area. I think it will depend on the context where the operations or the future operation is. It, it will depend. But perhaps the to obtain the social consensus and be able to understand the times of the operation versus the social times. Because we have, mm -hmm. uh, in the operation, we have our times. We need to do the exploration and uh, in the next years, uh, be able to present to the market where the ore uh, is and how the project will be developed in the next five years and, and 10 years. But for a community, that is not their time. Uh, if we want to have a permit for January, perhaps for them is the time of harvesting or mm -hmm. doing hunting. 
So they say, no, we are going to talk in March or we are going to talk in the springtime. No, no. But the corporate level uh, wants perhaps to pursue or, mm. uh, or move forward with the project, the operation, but uh, start to understand that they need to wait for the time that as well, the local communities have the time to, to talk. This is a very, that's, that's a very interesting answer. I don't want to put words in your mouth, so I'm just going to try to clarify. Is it, are you, the technology is there, the ability is there, but that doesn't necessarily translate into social license. Is that what yeah. you're getting at? I, and, and even I, I, I like more than social license. Uh, I like the social consensus mm. word because you talk about and you arrive at a consensus with the local communities, with the local government as well on how to develop a project. You turn to be part of the neighborhood and you support the development of a specific project. So you look for this social consensus with the local communities, with the local government. And what I say is that sometimes the timing or, or, or the planning that the mining uh, companies design based at, uh, as we as engineers, we say, okay, this is my schedule yeah. in the next 30 years. And the first five years, I'm going to do exploration. Next 10 years, uh, the construction, permitting, operation. But that exactly time doesn't work like that for the local communities. Mm. So it needs to be that understanding first and then define, be able to define the, the operation and the time frame that is required for the a correct execution of a project. Do you, do you think the, some of the technology that I, I get to sit here and listen to is it's unbelievable, but how do you go to uh, a community and say, okay, here's a, here's a thousand interviews. <laughs> yeah. They're not going to listen to those. Here's a, here's, 50 white papers on all the, the sensors and the, the flow charts and all that stuff. But yet I've also seen where I think mines have been too high level. And, um, and I, I've always gone back to this. There was a mine where the community thought there was going to be too much noise and dust. But from a technical perspective, and I looked at it unbiasedly, I was just curious because it was near a community that I, I, I care about. And it was, they had it they had a system in place to mitigate that. It wasn't a legitimate concern in that particular case, but it became part of the story that it was. Okay. And they, they lost, they, they lost control of it. The mine never happened. They, 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 the mine didn't go ahead. How do you think mines need to do that when they've got it done right? Mm -hmm. And they haven't always, but when they have done it right, where do you think that fine line is? This is a technical information and this is our, yeah. our public presentation. It, it's, it's tricky. It really yeah, is. Totally, totally. Yeah. And, 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 and perhaps with my other hat as, as from the academia, mm. uh, understanding how to translate the technical information for a lame um, group and, and be able to explain to all in, in simple words what that things uh, means. And as well, it's critical to understand the, the context and how the different communities or group of population communicate or translate that information. And it's based as well in the in the history that they uh, had before. Um, unfortunately, yeah, for the mining sector in the past, there were different um, impacts in the environment or in the communities. We still see some of them around the world. So that is the impact of what they see uh, in general, what is happening. And they are, they have natural concerns. And the idea is to explain to them exactly how the things uh, work to build this trust. Mm -hmm. So when you have, it's a relationship that you need to manage. It's not just like I obtain my permit and that's it. And then right. I will see you in two years when I need another permit. No, it's a relation that needs to keep in constant communication, invite them to see other similar operations, invite the community to listen what they are the really concerns. Probably are not the environment, probably are not the water, perhaps are more the economic development and the work opportunities or mm -hmm. jobs that will be yeah. uh, in the operation. But as well, some elders, perhaps they are, the concerns are in terms of the biodiversity or impacts that they saw in the past and mm -hmm. they want just to keep that uh, moving with a friendly and ecological process uh, that doesn't affect the, the nature. So I think that is critical, that communication process to continue uh, talking with them, understanding and, and build that relation is critical since the beginning. Mm -hmm. I, I want to uh, uh, pivot over to the decarbonization. Big word, it's a, 
I I don't fully I I don't fully understand it to be honest. I I was watching um I, I'm watching hockey game a hockey game yesterday. Uh, my my team doesn't even get on the radar of getting in the playoffs anymore. So I don't want to talk about hockey. But um, the the a lot of the ads they're 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 claiming that they're carbon neutral. I, I know some of these companies. I have a tough time seeing that that's completely accurate. So I'm a little right. suspect of it. It's a complicated. There's probably maybe someone like yourself who has a good understanding of what it means to be carbon neutral. Decarbonization. A lot of us do not understand what's going on, right? Um, or what even that we're trying to accomplish, and certainly not how we're going to accomplish it. What is your sort of high level understanding of it? And then let let's dive into it. Yeah. Specific to the mining sector. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think well, the, the climate change is not, is not something new in general. No, uh, we know that the the Anthropocene and the relation with the humans with the Earth in general, we are polluted that, and we increase the uh, temperature because the the, con the consumption of uh, the fuel and um, that increase the the global warming in in general. Uh, but after the Paris Agreement in 2015, there were uh, an increase uh, and in more interest from the companies and how we, to be able to reduce that global warming and avoid the uh, impacts of the climate change for the society in general. So m most of the companies start to talk about that. And the most important, the banks, the lenders, mm -hmm. the investors yeah. start to look specific on that situation how the companies where my money as investor will be, I, I want to see that they have a plan to avoid to increase the global warming, to reduce the potential impacts that is producing to the environment and how that will reduce as well the uh, potential impacts of the climate change in general. That is a, a, a challenge for all the society. So I think the when the investors start to make more pressure in, in that perspective. The companies start to work on looking how to reduce that carbon footprint and a process to understand the scope one, scope two, scope three, that are the different sectors or areas of the emissions uh, that we produce or, or in general that the companies uh, produce and how to manage that process. So, and then the decarbonization is the transition process for use energy, clean energy that will come from hydroelectrics or other um, areas that has less emissions than the fuels. Where do you think the mining industry like you should be looking for that decarbonization? Where do you think their biggest opportunities are? If you could put it in a few buckets. Yeah. First, I, I think that when we talk about climate change, usually there is a focus on mitigation, that is the reduction of the emissions of the greenhouse gases, but as well, there is a process on understanding the adaptation strategies, how to be able to cope for the potential impacts of climate change. So the decarbonization, uh, there is a lot of technology now that are coming to reduce, uh, for example, the, the, the combustion on, on the trucks that are using in the operations, the plants, the, the mill, the, as well, all the metallurgic process, uh, the reduction of, of that uh, elements and the use of energy and other uh, elements, uh, chemicals that are using and how to reduce that. But as well, we can use the adaptation strategies to uh, reduce the potential impacts on climate change. And all that process uh, helps as well to reduce the carbon footprint. I, I, this is actually, I think I can expand on this properly from that answer, is that uh, does that end up being decarbonization at a operation? Or is there, is that, you got to build a battery, you got to mine it, you got it. Yep. There's a lot that has to happen to get that operation. So it's decarbonized. Where do you think we are at getting that down the supply chain though? because all of these different operations feed in and now all this production, yeah. all this mining, all the fuel that's going to create this now has to end up in that. So from a, a from an overall sp sp perspective, how does, do you, do, you, do you see a way forward from that as opposed to just one, one operation being decarbonized? What about the supply chain? that feeds that operation? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, and not just the supply chain, but as well the design and the opportunities, for example, to work together with other sites. If uh, two or three companies that are working mm. in a similar yeah. region decide to work in a, just one tailing, 
So they will reduce the carbon right. footprint. They will reduce the emissions that they are using. If they decide to work in the different uh, or deposits that they have with um, similar plants um, or the, the trucks that they are using and, and invest all together, working uh, um, together, this will reduce the carbon footprint and for sure reduce the emissions that in, in the group will will produce in an entire area right Could, can that can that be done has that been done there are some um, examples of that uh, around the world but this is still something that needs to continue doing uh, there's a challenge for sure different companies they have different perspective yeah there is the different time different investors, different capital yeah absolutely so needs to to be a conversation around that but when you put in a, over the table how we can work together to create a more sustainable mining process, that will help as well and the decision makers and bring as well the investors to understand that process. And that will help uh, hopefully to, to arrive to that agreement. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to expand on that question a little more. more. And it's a tough question. It is a tough question. I, I'm not going to pretend it's not. But that going beyond even that, though, these, I mean, we, we've been seeing the news of some of these mines that are, um, you know, where, where batteries are getting, the products for batteries are getting sourced and stuff. It's, it's not right. It's not how mining should be done. It's not, people aren't getting treated right. Um, how do you, do you think the mining industry, how long before us as an industry, you've got a gold mine, let's say a Canadian gold mine, it's doing it beautifully, it's taking care of the environment, it's taking care of its people. You're seeing down Latin America, but then around the world, you're still seeing operations that are not operating the right way mm -hmm. and they're not treating people the right way. How do we as an industry hold those companies accountable so that they start doing it right? Right. And I think the industry in general, uh, we have here the Towards Sustainability from the Mining Association of Canada that set our guidelines that support as well, not just Canadian mining, but yeah. different countries or operations around the world are, are using that one. Uh, the ICMM as well have guidelines uh, to how to, to apply and, and manage uh, in different levels of the operation. So, but uh, 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 at the end are those the investors who are going to make a pressure uh, mm -hmm. on how to uh, change that, but as well the market, the right. those who are going to to buy the, the product. Uh, yes. I, I recall uh, like five, seven years ago talking about how amazing it will be when uh, somebody proposed to 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 get married uh, to your girlfriend, and, and you arrive and say, "I want to marry you," right? And and you are certified that this is a goal <laughs> yes. that comes for a specific area that has human rights, uh, mm -hmm. manage the environment, the water, produce economic development for the communities, so has a value. Yes. So I think it's something that uh, will start to. To, to push and as well you hopeful the, of it? the market. Do you, do you think it'll get better? In I think so, yes. yeah, because you will, it's a, a value that you add yes. to, to the process and, and you know that what you are bringing to the person in that uh, beautiful day is even with more value, yeah. Yeah. right? More purity to it. Yes. Yeah, it really yeah. is. Yeah, so th this is an example, right? Yes, of course. There are different ways as well that the market at the end will decide how to, to use that, but when the market is educated as well, they will start to request yeah. this for the companies and yes. the companies will need to align on this. Yes, the the technology, um, we, we have to touch a little bit more on the, that side because the technology to reach sustainability to your focus, um, I guess what's your perspective? You've been in the industry and so you've sort of seen this explosion of yeah. technology that's entered the mining industry. With, with your specific role, where do you see it landing? What, what is sort of your perspective as you're watching these companies yeah. surge into the industry? Yeah, and that is amazing. I, I would say in the last seven, eight years, how the technology start to grow yeah. immensely. And now we have the artificial intelligence, yeah. the all the algorithms to predict potential failures and the use of drones in yeah. detailings to understand potential failures and the scanners uh, using pictures, satellite. So all of that uh, information and, and technology, it's a lot of data. Uh, the most important is how we use this information to be able to take decisions, informed decisions. 
But as well, we have a lot of, I recall 15 years ago, the sustainability reports and beyond the great pictures that were there, there were a lot of data. And now we have a lot of indicators, but what we need, this, the challenge still is how we use these indicators to change. And it's not like the same indica indicators each year or in the sustainability report. So, and we need to be able to use all that technology and the use of these uh, KPIs to start to make a change as well and to take decisions and uh, and show that to the our stakeholders and as well to the investors and all together look uh, in a positive perspective and look how we can do the different uh, finding a better way yeah it, it's very exciting it's, it is an exciting time to yeah, be it a is, part it of the industry i was going to ask um oh i was just looking at my notes here because there's a couple things i wanted to ask oh the increased is it helpful to us, Anko, when you're, when you're trying to implement these strategies and doing your consulting services, the increased regulation, the, the, the pressure from governments, from investors, does it make your job easier because you're actually having to deliver in a narrower sphere? There's not so like, there, there's certain things they just have to do now. So you just have to, you can just put it in or does it make it more complicated? Yeah. Well, both. Um, <laughs> again. I will say the, the, we are lucky to have a interdisciplinary team with different regions mm. and that different knowledge of that specific regions help us to understand the specific requirements. Yeah. So we are able to address that needs for our clients and say, in British Columbia, this is the specific uh, legislation that we need to do as different on Halifax is different in Manitoba. Just to talk here with our province, right? Yeah. And if we look to in the south, our neighbor, and the, the same is, is different. And then if we move to South America or South Africa, it's, it's totally different. So in our case, uh, what the different teams that we have globally with the local understanding and then together working together with the local understanding, but uh, working together with a, a general view of what is required to do with the new technology, the approach yeah. uh, based on the, the context, local context, we help our clients to arrive for the decision uh, that they need to, to do and then move forward with the projects. I, I'm really curious about this, that in Canada, we've seen a lot of, we've, we've seen an increase in regulation. I, I think that's a fair thing to say. And I, I'm curious in comparison, like you mentioned, South Africa or down into Latin American countries, are they adding in the same regulatory things as Canada at the same rate? I mean, obviously they're all adding them in, but do you have any sort of gauge on the comparison of a, a South Africa to yeah. Canada or to Chile or, or you know, just yeah, your perspective absolutely. on it? I think in, in my experience, uh, Canada is always looking like a mining country with a lot of experience and, and uh, for sure a lot of uh, management in terms of environment for because of our ecosystem we have uh, our country has a lot of water a lot of, water. Uh, a lot yeah. of different kind of um, ecotypes or ecosystem so when the all the uh, regulation and the management that we have here in canada could be applied as well in different countries and global affairs canada is is doing a very interesting uh, job it, translating and providing support for the different countries to increase or to improve the uh, legal or regulatory perspectives that they, they have. I was yeah, lucky or, or I'm glad to be invited by Global Affairs Canada in, in different times to support in Dominican Republic, in Argentina, in Chile, Peru, uh, to uh, improve the regulation or the uh, standards in terms mm. of climate change, of environmental impact assessment, or mine closure. So it's important what we are doing here, uh, in a sense of it's not just impacting our uh, the operations that are here in Canada, but as well we as Canadians, how we are supporting other mm. countries to look the sustainability perspective and how to produce and be able to to improve the sustainable management on the on the mining companies and as well our mining companies, the Canadian mining companies here are working in different regions and for example in in South America. They apply as well the regulations that we have or the standards or the guidelines that we have and improve as well the local knowledge. So I think it's, it's super important, this process. It is a exciting time to be part of the mining industry. Uh, it, we'll wrap it this last question with what would you, when, it, when, a, when a company, if let's say someone watches this interview and they reach out to you and say, okay, we're, we've got this project, we want to start. 
where do you think, what is the mindset that they should go into when you're, you're talking about sustainability and ESG and all these things that they now have to have the forefront just to get the capital, <laughs> never right. mind the project going under, getting underway. What do you, what do you think their high level approach and be at the executive levels? Yeah, I think the first, the understanding of the long term as the mining always is, is, is a long term process, but understand how the local context is, mm -hmm. what are the potential impacts or implications as well that an, a new operation, an operation will be in that area because the mining arrived to an area that exists before, will produce, will extract the, the minerals that if it's not extracted has no value. We need, the industry needs to extract the, that deposit to have a value yeah. and then we'll, be, we'll close it. So to be able to have all the long-term picture of mm. that process, that is why we usually say, start to design your closure since the beginning. Yeah, It's important to understand all the cycles since the beginning. And with that, be able to have the the lenders, the banks to manage the risk, to involve all since the beginning. The local community, yeah. all of that, yeah. No, it's uh, it's very important. And uh, thank you, Gabriel, ah, for coming no, on the show. I, uh, I hope this is not our last time. Actually, I think... I think, is there a sake of doing another episode tomorrow? I don't think it's with you. I think I, multiple episodes yeah, with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a, with other, with our yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I mean, obviously one episode, it's just, uh, it's a little dent in the co company of your scale. So uh, thank you for taking the time. Oh, no, I yeah, really do thank appreciate you for it. having me here and to enjoy. I enjoy a lot this time. All right. Hope okay. you come back. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. And thank you everybody for watching uh, some important questions covered in this episode. And we'll continue to expand on them because they, as much as we promote technology and that you you, you need to be discussing all levels of mining, and that's what mining now is about. Um, if we want the future of mining to be better, not just for, for us here, but all around the world for everyone. So thank you for watching. We will see you on the next episode of Mining Now.